and certainly hopes that change has done them some good, and when you add tradition-rich Nebraska to your league, that doesn't hurt at all. Now you have 12 teams, you'll have two divisions, the Legends and the Leaders Division, with those division champs to meet at the end of the season in Indianapolis. We'll talk more about that in a second. Let's go ahead and talk about the biggest story, though, as we lit off with the Leaders Division. The biggest story this offseason in all of college football, the Ohio State University, is for reasons we already know why. Buckeyes, though, still have to address the issue of quarterback all season long. They're looking at four guys right now, in particular true freshman Braxton Miller. Don't be surprised if he's the starter. Ohio State, I think, will be a fine offensively once they get those key players back. But for those first five games, two of them at Miami, and then playing at home against Michigan State, it's going to be a pretty tall order. Defensively, they list four starters, but they did play a ton of defensive players last year. So defensive side, I'm not as concerned about them, in particular with Nate Williams and John Simon back at defensive ends. I look for the Buckeyes to go somewhere around 8-4 and four or 9-3, and three, but because they've got a lot of holes to fill and a new um, head coach, they're not going to win the leaders' division. And neither will Penn State, but at least Joe Paterno is back. The Nittany Lions have some shoes to fill on the offensive and defensive interiors and at running back losing Evan Royster. At least the quarterback position is experienced with um, Rob Bolton and Matt McGloin back. McGloin will probably be the starter. It's a darn good secondary, but again, the interiors are a concern. The schedule, other than Alabama, the second week of the season looks relatively manageable the first nine games, but the last three games, Nebraska at Ohio State at Wisconsin, November will be rough for Penn State, but they should be fine before them. I look for them to finish fourth in the leaders' division. I look for Illinois to finish third, thanks large in part that Nathan Shieldhouse is back their all-everything quarterback. They will be, however, without their all-everything running back in Mikhail Leeshore, but three offensive linemen return for the Illini, so I think the offense will still be in good shape. Defensively, just like Penn State, the Illini will have an experienced secondary, but defensive line and linebackers have got to pass that up. Eight home games await the Illini. No Nebraska, no Michigan State on the slate. If they can handle Penn State on the road, then the Illini can improve upon that 7-6 record from a year ago. Purdue returns nine starters, but the offense was the problem last year for the Boilermakers. Only 19 points a game probably didn't help them that they had big injuries. Um, they will return the running back and uh, Ralph um, Bolton and also Robert um, Marv will be back at quarterback. Both are coming off significant injuries though. For the Boilermakers, I think they'll flirt with that five or six win total. They can get six, they go to a bowl game. They got to stay healthy though and they have to improve upon that point per game average to do so. And Kevin Wilson, the former Oklahoma offensive coordinator, he will now take the head coaching position at Indiana. Good luck to Mr. Wilson because you don't have Ben Chappell, the QB, there anymore. Um, you will have a pretty talented group of receivers, but last season Indiana was dead last in the Big Ten in rushing, and they gave up a ton of yards on the opposite side of the ball on the ground. So for the Hoosiers, I think it will be a rebuilding year for them. And remember, um, they're not very fast on defense. Look for Wilson, once the season's over, to heavily recruit fast defensive players. They have to have that to be competitive in the Big Ten. Wisconsin's my pick to win the leaders. Their backfield is loaded with James White back, and also um, they'll have that Monty Ball pair of 1,000-yard rushers from a year ago. The quarterback issue seems to be addressed. They lost Scott Tolson, but get Russell Wilson, the all-ACC versatile quarterback, Wilson should be the added piece to that team on offense. they got to replace some linemen, but just like Oregon, Wisconsin seems to know how to replace talent that's lost. And defensively, they'll be solid uh, with Chad Borland at linebacker. They return six defensive starters. Wisconsin has to go to Michigan State and Ohio State and host Nebraska. We'll see how they handle those, which I think will be their three toughest games. I look for it to be a 10-2 or 11-1 year for the Badgers and for them to win the leaders. Now let's take a look at the Legends Division.
Brady Hoke, welcome to Michigan and Big Ten football. But at least you inherit nine starters on offense, including the all-everything quarterback, Denard Robinson. Biggest question is, can the Michigan O adapt to the pro-style offense as opposed to the spread, which they ran under the fired coach, uh, Rich Rodriguez? Defensively, needless to say, must get better there. Last season, they gave up a ton of points. Statistically, the worst Michigan defense in the more than century-long history of that fine program. The schedule, attractive home games, Ohio State, Nebraska, and Notre Dame all visit the big house, but the Wolverines have to go to Iowa and have to go to Michigan State. I look for Michigan to be better, but their D will prevent them from winning the division. Sticking with the uh, Legends division, how about Iowa? When you think they're going to be bad, they do good. When you think they're going to do good, they underachieve. This year, not a lot's expected from them, so maybe that's a good omen if you're a Hawkeye fan. You have to replace the quarterback in Ricky Stanzi. You have James Vanderver who will fill in those shoes. And on the defensive side, there are a lot of shoes to fill. Um, you lose three of your offensive linemen, but at least you have a, a senior player in the form of uh, Michael Daniels. So we'll see how Iowa does. Their schedule is not too difficult. Uh, they avert Ohio State from the schedule at least. And also there's no Wisconsin on there as well. They do, however, have to go to Nebraska at the end of the game. Don't be surprised if that game has Legends division implications. Northwestern might have the most talented QB in the Big Ten in the form of Dan Perza. Um, improvises very well, very accurate, um, does things that are difficult, if not impossible, to teach a QB. Offensively, Northwestern will be fun to watch, but defensively, they had letdowns a year ago. So I think the Wildcats, they got to a bowl game last year, fell short though against Texas Tech in that bowl game, probably looking at a 7-8 win team, but just like Michigan, they have some issues on the defensive side. Michigan State will be in contention in the Legends, no doubt about it. With Kirk Cousins back at QB and talented running back Edwin Baker, the backfield is loaded. Um, have some issues, though, about the receivers and also the offensive line after have to replace three starters. And um, the secondary, that's something to also keep an eye on for the Spartans. They will be tough to run against um, on the defensive line. Three starters are back for uh, the green and white of Michigan State. The Spartans... Um, they have to go to Nebraska. I don't foresee them winning that game. Um, there's also a game at Ohio State. Even with Ohio State not having the same makeup as his years past, that will still be a difficult game. The Spartans, they won 11 games last year. I think they probably win 9, possibly 10. But again, that game um, at Nebraska is going to be difficult. And plus, they have to play at Notre Dame. That's another game that could trip them up as well. Minnesota, pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Okay? Um, Jerry Keel is now the new coach, which is fitting because last season, even though he wasn't there, that was the theme of Minnesota. They were getting killed, especially on defense. They only got to the quarterback. They only sacked him nine times. That's for the whole team for the whole season, an embarrassing statistic. And we will see how the uh, Golden Gophers do. They're not expected to finish above the cellar, so I can't pick them ahead of any of the uh, Legends teams. It won't be fun at all for the Golden Gophers. So now Nebraska. Talking about the new kids on the block, not Jordan Knight or Donnie Wahlberg, but we're talking about Nebraska, the new interest of the conference. Expect good things from Taylor Martinez. He must stay healthy, though, for Nebraska to win the Legends. We saw when he was hobbled with that ankle last year that it was not the same team. About half of the offensive linemen are back. Roy Hillu Jr. has to be replaced. Rex Burkhead, though, is a quality um, backup. Now he becomes the main guy in the backfield, gained nearly 1,000 yards a year ago. The defensive line will be very stout, especially at the tackles with Jared Crick and Baker Steinkuhler. Um, they do lose Pierre Allen, however, on the defensive inside, so they have to get good outside rush. And then the linebackers, we're talking about Will Compton as well as all everything LB, Levante David. Um, mixed reviews on the secondary. Alfonso Denard could be All-American from his defensive back spot, but you lose Prince of Mukamare and also Dijon Gomes. Those are big losses along with Eric Hack. It's still going to be a tough front seven, and I think that'll be good enough for Nebraska to win the Legends division. But Wisconsin, with their versatility at quarterback in the deep backfield, I look for the Badgers to win the Big Ten Championship in Indy and to once again go to a BCS game. That's my look at the Big Ten.
Thank you.